Good morning, good morning. Good to see everyone here today. Want to want to uh, welcome you today, and uh, we if you happen to be uh, visiting with us, we appreciate it if you filled a little card out on the back of the pew and uh, drop it in the offering. And also, if you have a prayer request, we have one there to uh, to mark the prayer request, and you could put that in the offering plate as as well. So uh, we'll remember uh, those. And also, uh, we I have some real good news today. Everybody likes good news. Guess what? We got a we got a, a fellow that the church called unanimous Wednesday night, Brother James. Good to, good to have him on the team here today, and and the coming weeks and and months. Also, uh, we want to uh, uh, encourage you to uh, turn in your, your, your boxes for the, the Christmas shoe boxes. And also, uh, just as a reminder, that please uh, put a $10 check in there for help to, uh, for shipping. So, cash? Okay, I, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, also, if, if you don't want to put a check, put a $10 bill in there, or, and uh, that'll uh, uh, cover it. Also, uh, as a uh, reminder, upcoming uh, revival, be praying for that this uh, November the 4th and 5th, and then our homecoming celebration on the, uh, on the 6th. And uh, we'll have dinner on the ground on that day. Also, uh, we want to remember the uh, Baptist uh, Women's World Day of Prayer, November the, the 7th, day after a homecoming. And one other thing, if you hadn't figured it out yet, we love to eat here, Brother David. Amen. We love to eat. So uh, we're having a Thanksgiving dinner on the 22nd, and we want to bring a side, uh, side dish for that. And... Uh, so that all being said, we're going to stand up and sing praises to the Lord. My huh, brother James? That's right. Y'all, please stand up. We're going to sing Blessed Be the Name, hymn 206. <laughs> oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, blessed be the name of the Lord, the glories of my God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Second verse. Jesus, the name that calms my fears. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. For verse, I never shall forget that day. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When Jesus washed my sins away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me hear you. Here we go. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Jerusalem Baptist Church, hello. hello. For all of you that are here and for all of you that are watching uh, from home, we are glad that you are with us. Hey, John. Hey, buddy. <laughs> now, I don't have any idea what you may have on your mind this morning, but I, 
I got a feeling we all pretty much kind of walk the same path in this life. So it's quite possible that you brought with you a care today, a concern, a problem, something that might be causing you some worry or anxiety. Well, I want to let you know you're in the right place. Amen. Amen? Yeah. And I want to also remind you of what our Lord said in Matthew chapter 11. In verse 28, he says, Come to me, all you who are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Amen. 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 He says, put on my yoke and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. (laughs) Man, what a promise, huh? Oh, man, what a promise. Church, I pray this morning that we can set aside the cares of this life, that we can give them to our Lord this morning, and we can worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today not as orphans or outcasts, but we come to you as your children. Lord, children of the living God, mighty and powerful, full of grace and love for your people. Lord, I pray that you would meet with us this morning, not because we're deserving, but because we need you. Lord, there's no hurt that you can't heal, no care that you can't comfort. And Lord, I just pray that you would meet with us today because we know that you stand ready and able to help us when we come to you. And you tell us that you long for us to seek you and that when we seek you, we will find you. And when we find you, Jesus, we will find peace. Thank you for that promise. Lord, I pray that you would give us victory in this life. And I thank you for the victory that we have over sin and death through your son, Jesus Christ. And these things we ask in his mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. Guess what? Tenacious tights. Y'all come on down. Where y'all at? morning how are y'all doing man did y'all have fun yesterday i had a blast i laughed until my side hurt with some of y'all trying to get a hold of them apples yesterday y'all remember that that was fun huh the apple did <laughs> they popped in the head. <laughs> church we had a good day yesterday and i i want to thank you for supporting us for those of you that gave for those of you that came and worked and for the parents that brought their and the grandparents who brought their children Thank you. Thank you. I believe that when we put a smile on a kid's face in Jesus' name, it's a good day. Amen? Yeah. And, we, and we did that yesterday, and I am so grateful for you for doing that. So, all right, let's talk about this name thing. I, you know, I want y'all to know that the church has been giving me some good suggestions, right? Some of them I can't mention in this environment, but some of them are really good. Like yesterday, Miss Nicole came to me and said, Brother Frank, he had a good suggestion, and that, I like what he said, and we may be changing and going in a different direction because of that in the future. But today, I want to ask you a question. Do you know what it means to win? Hmm? No, wait, wait, tell you what, wait, scrap that. Win is not a strong enough word. You see, I watched y'all play some of those games yesterday and win, and there's just not a lot of skill and struggle involved in your wins, all right? <laughs> I think there was a lot of luck involved. What do you think? Hmm? No, y'all say <laughs> no. So look, I, I want to rephrase that. I think what I mean to ask is, do y'all know what it means to be victorious? Hmm? You see, when I think about being victorious, I think of someone who's gone through a great struggle. Someone who's having to give everything they have to win the victory. Say, for instance, our soldiers who've been victorious in a great battle. Man, they had to give everything they had to win or to be victorious because if they lose, there's a lot to lose. You understand that? The Bible tells us that we may go through some things in this life that we just can't win the victory over alone. And we're going to talk about more of that in just a minute because I want you to have victory in this life. But the second part of the name thing is that I know that you love music. You ask me how I know that? Because I've seen you. Let me show you something. 
Let me see if I can find that. All right, let me turn this up. Y'all see that? Y'all remember that? Huh? Huh? <laughs> that, that's how y'all praise Jesus with music. Now, Miss uh, Miss Monica said that. Woo. I don't know if Brother Sherwood can handle much more of that. So, so look, Miss Monica said we all need some more of that, right? So, victorious in life, y'all love music, so this week's name choice is Brother Tim's Triumphant Troubadours. Huh? So, yeah, you think it's better than the last one? That's a classy name, huh? So, triumphant. To be victorious in this life and a troubadour, among other things. Miss, you got to go to Miss Judy for a complete definition of that. But a troubadour is someone who's a poet or they like music. Triumphant troubadours. Man, I think I even saw some of the deacons smile and shake their head about that one. Huh? Yeah, oh, it does? Okay. Well, man, I thought y'all was going to jump up and dance when I said that one. but All right, so we'll talk more about it later, all right? Triumphant truth, all these notes I got. We might be here 30 minutes this morning. So let's talk about, let's go back and talk about being victorious again. You know, the Bible tells us that we may have to deal with some very difficult situations in this life, and some of them may be very unexpected. Hmm? Let me give you an example. Let me tell you a story. So there was this photographer, and he worked for a big newspaper. And in his town where he was at, they had a forest fire. And this forest fire was raging, man. It was the big news. And so the photographer's boss called him and said, man, you need to get out there and get some pictures of this thing so we can get them in the paper. So he jumped in his car, put his equipment in, he runs out to the fire, and he gets out there, and he can't get too close because it's hot, there's smoke everywhere, so he can't get any good pictures. And so he calls his boss back, and he says, hey, man, we need to take pictures from the air. Can you get me an airplane? Boss said, I'll call you right back. A few minutes later, his boss calls him and said, get to the airport. I got an airplane booked, ready to go. All you got to do is get in it. He jumps in his car, gets his equipment, drives out to the airport. And sure enough, when he gets there, there's a plane out there sitting on the runway, all warmed up and ready to go. He grabs his equipment. He jumps in the back of the airplane. He tells the pilot, let's go, let's go. They take off, and they fly over, you know, the fire. And, and the photographer hollers up at the pilot. He says, man, you got to get down lower. you got to make a few passes over here on this area so I can get some pictures. And the pilot looked kind of funny. He looked back at him and said, what do you want to do that for? That's dangerous. And the photographer said, man, I'm a photographer for the newspaper. we got to get down there and get some pictures. And the pilot looked back at him and said, you mean you're not the flight instructor? <laughs> huh? <laughs> that pilot and, and that photographer found themselves in a difficult situation. Now, now that's, a, that's a funny little story, y'all. But listen, I'm going to get serious just a minute. Life may bring us some difficulties that are very hard for us to handle. And I'm not talking about an annoying brother or sister or you can't get to go to Disney World this year. Well, she, she's looking at you, man. I'm talking about some very difficult situations, and it doesn't matter. Listen, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. It may seem small to someone else, but to you it may be a mountain. It may be that there's a kid at school that's being mean to you, and he's making your life miserable, or she's making your life miserable. Or it may be that someone you love has gotten sick, or you may have gotten sick yourself. Or it may be that you don't understand what's going on, but you just know that something's wrong. You see, this life is going to bring us some difficult situations. It may cause you some worry, some anxiety. But listen, I want you to listen to what I'm fixing to say. Look at me. God has put people in your life that love you, and they want to help you with those situations. You go to them. You know who they are, parents, grandparents, friends at church. You go to them, and you tell them what it is that's bothering you, that's causing you a problem so that they can help you. But more importantly, I want you to know that you are not alone. That our Lord Jesus Christ is with you always. And he wants to help you too. And you go to Jesus too. All right? I want, you, I want to read something to you. 
in the book of Deuteronomy, that's an Old Testament book, chapter 31, verse 6, the Bible tells us, be strong, be fearless, don't be afraid, and don't be scared by your enemies, listen, because the Lord your God is the one who marches with you. God is beside us in this life, and he wants to help us. He says he won't let us down and that he will never abandon us. And in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or suffering or hard times or hunger or danger or nakedness and even death cannot separate us from the love of God? He finishes that chapter by saying, but in all these things, I like this part, y'all, but in all these things, we win a sweeping victory through the one who loved us, and that's Jesus. He says, I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord, not death, not life, not angels, not rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth or any other thing that is created. Nothing, y'all, can separate us from God's love. You see, we can only be victorious in this life when we have Jesus. Do you understand that? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are so blessed. Lord, we have you as our great and mighty God who cares for us and loves us more than we can possibly understand. Lord, I pray that you would be with these children. I pray that your spirit would fill them with the knowledge of how much you love them and that you never will leave them or abandon them and that they can go to you with anything and you are willing and able to help. Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you. Watch over these kids, protect them, Guard them against the evil things of this world, and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, triumphant troubadours, get you back. So we're going to stand up, ask you to stand. We're going to sing this praise song, Battle Belongs to You. We've done this uh, uh, before. We're going to keep, kind of keep doing some of the same praise songs a little bit, get everybody familiar with them. And uh, uh, real quick, I had a, just a little quick story with uh, helping out with the fall fish yesterday. I heard something that you will never hear a kid ever say, and some of the, some of the adults heard it too, but one of the little girls was playing a game, and she, they all got a lot of candy. And about halfway through this game, she just looked down, and she's like, oh. And, and, and they were like, what's wrong? And her bag was just full. She's like, literally, this is a probably seven-year-old. She's like, I'm so spoiled. I have too much candy. I was like, what in the world? You'll never, things you'll never hear a kid say. But she's like, you know, it, she realized how uh, blessed she was with the candy. Anyways, listen, we're going to sing Battle Belongs to You. Here we go. When all I see is the battle. Here we go. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain moved. And as I walk through the shadow, and as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. Sing that chorus. So when I fight, I fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. can be against me for Jesus there's nothing impossible for you when all 
I see all the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is the cross, God, you see an empty tomb. I need you to lift your voice, church, sing it out. Here we go. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. And oh, God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. And oh, God, the battle belongs to you. And almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Sing it out. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Come on, one more time. Here we go. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. No God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, and I'll sing through the night. No God, the battle belongs to you. So when I fight, I on my knees with my hands lifted high and oh God the battle belongs to you lift it up every fear I lay at your feet and I'll sing through the night oh God the battle belongs to you you may be seated we're gonna sing another praise song and then we got a good another good hymn coming up this is a song y'all all know it's 10,000 reasons and it just starts off, bless the Lord, O my soul, worship his holy name. All right, here we go. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, and O my soul. Worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Sing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, your rich love and your slow to anger, your name is great. And reasons for my heart to find. Sing it out, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. And on that day, my strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. But still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. One more time, church. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Lance, would you lead us?
this in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to be in your house. Father, we ask that you use these tithes and offerings, Father, to bless this church and this community and use them, Father, in the way that you see fit. I pray that our hearts are ready to uh, receive this message that Brother David is prepared for it. That, Father, we may not just be hearers of the word, but we may be doers also, that whenever we leave these doors of this church building, that we go out and we're an example to everyone that we meet. I ask you to forgive us our many sins and shortcomings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have faith in God when your pathway is lonely. He sees and knows all the way you have trod. Never alone are the least of his children. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. He's on his throne. Have faith in God. He watches over his own. He cannot fail. He must prevail. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God when your prayers are unanswered. Your earnest plea he will never forget. Wait on the Lord, trust his word and be patient. Have faith in God, he'll answer. Yes, sing it out, church. Have faith in God, he's on his throne. Have faith in God, he watches o'er his own. He cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in God. Last verse. Have faith in God, though all else fail about you. Have faith in God, he provides for his own. He cannot fail, though all kingdoms shall perish. He rules, he reigns upon his throne. Have faith in God, he's on his throne. Have faith in God, he watches o'er his own. He cannot fail. Must prevail. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Amen. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. Say amen. amen. I know that he is glad to see you. Uh, one announcement uh, that uh, we didn't make this morning, but I want to make you aware of. Next Sunday, uh, as, we, as we travel through the, uh, of the miracles, the signs, and the gospel of John, uh, at the end of the service, that we are going to have the communion. We're going to have the Lord's Supper. And I encourage you to come and, 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 and take part of that. Another announcement that I uh, have for you this morning, uh, one of our family um, ha has passed from this life to the other, the Martin family. Uh, some of you may know them. Uh, Rhonda and I will be leaving right after service to go uh, be by their side and minister to them. Uh, so I'm going to have three opportunities to share the gospel today, the first beginning with you. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. I want you to turn in your Bible to John chapter 9. John chapter 9. We're going to kind of breeze over the whole chapter, but this morning uh, our key verses are in John uh, uh, chapter 9, verses 35 through 41. I always enjoy going through the signs in the Gospel of John because they have so much. Uh, to tell you and I, because they point to the deity of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's his birth uh, coming up that we will celebrate, and his resurrection uh, coming up that you and I will celebrate. And because of his resurrection, we know that we have 
uh, eternal life in him that one day too Amen. we will be resurrected. Uh, but right now this morning, uh, I want to ask you to stand in reverence as we look at the Gospel of John, uh, key verses 35 through 41. Now Jesus had heard they cast him out. The storyline today is a, a, about an unnamed man that was born blind and Jesus healed him and, and, and he received his sight. So as Jesus heard they had cast him out and when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, uh, that I may believe in him? And the, the word Lord you see in verse 36 would be like me calling you sir or brother uh, to that effect, okay? Verse 37, and, and Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who, uh, who see uh, um, may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We, uh, we see, therefore your sin remains. The healing of the blind man. Father God, we just come to you today, and I just want to pray for those that are uh, visiting with us today, whether in the sanctuary or online. Father, I pray for the Jerusalem uh, Baptist Church family. I pray that you be with the Martins as, as they uh, will lay one of their loved ones to rest today. And Father God, I pray if there's anyone here that cannot clearly see you in their life, that today may be the day that they can truly see you moving in their life. And Father God, I pray that you'll anoint me. Anoint me from on high this morning, Father God, I need it. And Father God, you just hedge me about and you anoint me from the crown of my head down through the soles of my feet and all the places in between. And Father, you move among your people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you, when those folks come to do the revival here at uh, Jerusalem, they're going to find out this church is already in revival. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? amen. How's Brother Johnny? Doing good? <laughs> amen. Uh, Jesus used a physical healing to teach a spiritual lesson. Uh, go back with me to verses 1 through 5. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man that was blind for birth, and the disciples said to him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, uh, answered neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when, when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And if you remember from last week that we saw the, uh, when the disciples got into the boat that Jesus told them to get into, that it was turning dark. I want you to know this morning, church, as we continue in the word of God, uh, it may be getting dark in your life today, but I want you to know if you just fix your eyes upon Jesus, he is going to shed some light. Before we proceed uh, uh, into, the, into this chapter, I want to go back to the pool of Bethesda just a few weeks ago. In John chapter 5 and verse 14, after Jesus healed the man that had been laying at the pool uh, for a long time, afterward Jesus found him, uh, the man with infirmity for 38 years in the temple, and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. Therefore we see the disciples question in John chapter 9 verse 2. And that day the Pharisees, the religious rulers taught in that day, if you had a, a, any infirmity of any kind that it must be a judgment uh, from God. I want you to know my friends that I have placed myself in circumstances in my life where I've suffered things physically but it was because of my own shortcomings and I want you to know that sometimes as children of God we go through things and, and we just can't help what we go through amen? amen and I want you to know today that you are made in the image of Christ amen, amen. I want you to know today most of all even though we're talking about an unnamed man I want you to know today that God knows your name amen. he knows where you are and what you've been going through amen 
Sometimes we go through things because of our shortcomings, and sometimes we go through things so God can show his glory. I've been in many revival services, and we have a whole weekend of revival. Y'all excited about revival? Come and say amen. amen. Yeah. Well, two or three of us are going to have revival. Amen. Yeah. Come on. I'm looking forward to being on that side of the pulpit for a weekend. I really am. Yeah. I, as a minister of the Word of God, I need to get preached to. Come on. I pray God will show you his glory in the next few weeks at this church. Uh, I want to call your attention that in verses 6 through 12, this is the only miracle with a two-step process. The only miracle with a two-step process. Well, let's pick up in verse 6. Well, now you should know that I love to just read through and preach the scriptures. Amen. And when he had said these things, when Jesus had said these things, he sped upon the ground and made clay with his saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went back and washed and came back seeing. Therefore the neighbors, um, therefore the neighbors and those who had previously had seen that he was blind said, Is this not uh, is not this he who sat and begged? And some said, This is he. And others says, It is like him. And he said, I am he. And therefore they said to him, How were your eyes open? And he answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received my sight. And they said to him, Where is he? And he said, I do not know. The theologians tell us that, that during that time the spittle uh, in the eye was a Common treatment. I, I, the, we have at least a couple of a nurse practitioners, people in the medical field here. They can elaborate on that. But I don't know about you, but but it seems to me that probably nine, maybe nine and a half, nine and three quarters people out of ten, if Jesus said, "I want to spit in your eyes so you'd be made well," I don't know if we'd want to receive that or not. Uh, come on now. I don't know if we'd want to do that, but, but, but as unappealing as it sounds, it was common practice, and Jesus used his saliva mixed with dirt to make the clay to anoint of the man's eyes. If you remember the, uh, if you remember the conversion of the apostle Paul, it said that, uh, of Saul to the apostle Paul, it said that just scales fell off his eyes. Maybe you've been going through something in your life this morning, church, and maybe you have some kind of scales over your eyes where you cannot see clearly. Yeah. My prayer is that today's the day that you receive the vision of what God is doing in your life. Yeah. My prayer today, and there's an anointing that rests on this message, and my prayer today is God will move in your life and in our church in a mighty and powerful yeah. way. We need God moving within the body of Christ today. Yeah. Not just Jerusalem, but every church you could possibly think of. We need the Holy Ghost flowing. Amen. Yeah. The brother said it a while ago and I will echo him. God wants to be worshipped in spirit and truth and God is seeking such to worship him. The mud was the motivator. The mud was the motivator for the obedience. The mud, uh, the, the, the Bible never tells us he, uh, this man asked to be healed. He was never promised a healing. He was just told to go and wash, so he went and washed, and the man could not see, but he could hear. Maybe you do not see clearly what the Lord is doing in your life today. Maybe you can't understand it, and you're not being able to see, well, Lord, I don't know if I, if I go out there and I begin to do this, I begin to talk to people. Maybe you cannot see, but my brothers and sisters you can hear when the, when, when the Lord is speaking to you. Amen. And why do I know that? Because my Bible teaches me that his sheep hears his voice. Amen. You can hear when God begins to speak to you. My friend, Jesus has a voice like no other. I've never heard God in an audible voice, but there was a time in my life when I was the preacher of the gospel. There was a time in my life where I was going through spiritual things that I took my Bible and I gave it back to God. And if there was such a time that I heard an audible voice from God and I told him, don't you see what they're doing to me? And his reply was, don't you see what they did to my son? My friend, you may not see clearly the battles that you're going through today. You may not understand what the Lord has you going through today but I want you to know if you'll just listen 
Psalms 46 and 10 says, Be still Amen. and know that I am God. If you will begin to listen, you will hear the voice Amen, of brother. God. He simply obeyed the uh, voice that was speaking to him. And Romans 10 and 17 says this, For by faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I've shared with you and I'll share with you again today. It doesn't matter to me how much of the Bible that you read. Read a verse. Read two verses, read two chapters, whatever you need to do. But every day get to get into the Word of God and allow the Word of God to speak to you. Amen. Every, every day you roll around, you get up out of bed. How many of you got up out of bed? Some, some of us may have had to have help, okay? But how many of you got up out of bed this morning and nobody helped you? Hopefully you stopped and praised the Lord. Amen. Amen. The mud was the motivator. The Pharisees, this is, the Pharisees wanted to excommunicate the healed man. Uh, when, when Ron and I first moved to Baton Rouge, and um, uh, any of y'all live in Baton Rouge? All right, we need to pray for them. Amen. Come on. Amen. But when Ron and I first moved to Baton Rouge, I went into Riverdale Baptist Church on O'Neill Lane and and Kirby Hill was my pastor. Kirby Hill was from Texas, and he said his great-grandfather, at the end of his lifelong ministry, had excommunicated more than he baptized. <laughs> yeah, y'all remember the days? Remember the days that we take him out of church? Well, the Pharisees wanted to excommunicate this healed man. In verses 13 through 34, I encourage you to read that. We read the questioning of the healed man, uh, of the blind man and his parents. The healed blind man was questioned by the Pharisees. They did not believe him, so they called in his parents. And then the parents, uh, in fear of being excommunicated, sidestepped the questioning of the Pharisees and tells the Pharisees, ask our son. He's of age. In verse 23, it says, therefore his parents said, he's of age, ask him. And they did just that. They called the healed man back in for questioning. In the second round of questioning, we see a couple of things. But I want you to understand the, uh, the, 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 the Pharisees wanted to excommunicate him, not because of, uh, of anything doing with Jesus Christ, because he had broken their law. My friends, Jesus never sinned. My friends, Jesus never broke a law. And when you see him healing on the Sabbath, uh, it was an was add-on that the Pharisees had there, and, and they wanted to excommunicate this man. And what I want you to know this morning, in this storyline, that, that we see the simplicity of the gospel. So they called the man back in. They said, he's of age. Ask him and pick up in verse 24 with me. And they again called the man who was blind and, and, and said to him, Give God the glory, for we know that this man is a sinner. And he answered and said, Whether he's a sinner or, or, or not, I do not know. But, but the one thing I know is though I was blind, now I see. Amen. Come on. Y'all saying that sometime or another. Amen. Amen. He said, The one thing I know is I had conditions and now I'm healed. The one thing I know is I was blind, but, but, but now I see. I want you to know, friends, there was a time in my life that I lived in deep spiritual darkness. There's not a preacher alive. There's not a man of God alive that hadn't been through some low point in your life. And I want you to know if that light pole would have took out the front of my car, and with the exception of my side view mirror on the driver's side, that's right, I miss hell about that much. About that much. And all I know is I was headed for a devil's hell and now I'm headed for an eternity in heaven. Amen. 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 That's what I know today. I know Christ and him crucified. So we see that. We see the simplicity of the gospel. It is just that easy. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, you know what, Brother David, I want to come to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I want to come and get to that point where I can begin to see what's going on in my life. My friends, if you walk down this aisle and give your heart to Jesus Christ, I promise you, you're not going to be disappointed. Amen. You can look at me and tell I've never missed a meal. Amen. Amen. Come on. And we got two eating meetings coming up. Somebody give God some glory. Amen. 
God loves you. He cares for you. The second thing we see when these Pharisees called them back in, we see the spiritual mindset of the Pharisees. Pick up in verse 26. Then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them and said, I told you already, you did not listen. Why, do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? <laughs> then they reviled him and said, you are his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses as for this fellow. We do not know where he is from. And the man answered and said to them, uh, why is this a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from? He has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. I have to pause right there just for a little second, and I'm going to go chase a, a prayer rabbit. Okay? My friends, if your heart does not belong to Jesus Christ, the only prayer he will hear from you is, Lord, please save me. Amen. Lord, please save Amen. me. If you want God to move in, your, and move in your prayer life, you have to give your heart to Jesus. My Bible teaches me the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or a righteous woman is going to avail much. Amen. I've shared this with you before and I'll share it again. I have two boys and their mama pours out her heart and soul for them boys. Daddy will pray for them and then do justice due as daddy is due. Amen. If you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ, today's the day of your salvation. Today's the day that you can do just Amen. that. Verse 32. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, You are completely born in sins. Are you teaching us? And they cast him out. We see the spiritual mindset of the Pharisees and and. and, and, and you know, and I know, if you don't know, we can get into it. Well, if, if, if we can get into it another time. But you know, and I know that the Jewish people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, wanted to crucify Jesus Christ because he was a threat to their power. We know that. The Bible teaches that. Amen. Don't let nobody keep you from Jesus Christ. If y'all still with me, say amen. Verse 35 through 41, then I have a little, y'all know what a little land yap is? Yes, sir. All right. Well, I thought I was from Mississippi. Y'all know what some land yap is? Yeah. Amen. We all like that little land yap. Amen. Little, land yap. little extra. Mm -hmm. Got a little extra. Our text, and I want to share a couple of things with you, okay? From my heart. From, from this preacher's heart, I, I have a couple things I want to share with Jerusalem Baptist Church and friends. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. When he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. See, my prayer is not only do you hear the Lord, but you will begin to see him move. In your life, he's moving in Jerusalem. I can, I, I, I assure you, since the first Sunday of September this way, he has been moving in Jerusalem. He has been moving in Jerusalem for over a hundred years, or you would not be here. Amen. Amen. Come on. And Jesus said to him, "You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you." Then he said, "Lord, I believe," and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, "For judgment I have come into the world, and those who." Do not see may see, and that those who, who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were uh, with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. We, we, we know from the study of the, of, of the scriptures 
that the Pharisees were spiritually blind because of their quest for power. After the resurrection of Lazarus, which we will look at next week, in John chapter 12, verse 19, I'll share with you these seven signs uh, from the Gospel of John are found uh, from John chapter 2 to John chapter 11. Beginning in John 12, Jesus sets his face towards the old rugged cross at Calvary. In John 12 and 19, the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see, you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. American author Hel Helen Keller said this, and I've, I, I, I've, I've, uh, I heard this quote 30 years ago. It's been part of my life. It says, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight with no vision. <laughs> my friends, can you see today? Can you clearly see that we're living in the, in the latter days? We're living in a time where we're on the doorsteps of the uh, second coming of Jesus Christ. Can you see today that if you don't keep the kids busy, the world will? Come on, somebody. Amen. In John 9 and 25, it says, The one thing I know, that though I was blind, and that now I see. When I grew up, and uh, some of you kids aren't going to know about all this, but you're looking at the guy that could change that antenna and put it precisely where I needed to be to pick up channel two. Come on, Amy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Daddy wasn't getting out of the recliner to turn the antenna. We had to, amen. There was no cable or internet or any of that stuff. The house I grew up in, there was three things that you were sure of that was going to come on TV. One was Walter Conkright. Come on. Amen. I don't even know of any other new cat. Well, I, Dan Rethers, I guess. I don't know. Two was the Waltons. Come on. And three was Hee Haw. Now, why do I tell you this? I can remember vividly as a child watching Hee Haw. We, 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 we watched it, and I remember, you know how they would sit around the coffee shop, or not the coffee shop, the barber shop, and they tell jokes? I'm going to tell you a joke from Hee Haw, but I'm also going to tell you that it was a reality in the ministry. I can remember a joke from Hee Haw about a man who passed and died and went to heaven. And St. Peter was walking that man through heaven, and he was walking down the hallway, and he said, well, here's the Methodist right here. And you did in this room, and they went by, and he, he heard some noise. They went singing of the hymns and that. He went on a little bit further, and he said, well, here's the Pentecostal room. That's where everybody uh, that died, and they attended the Pentecostal church. They go in there, and, 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 and say he hears all kind of music and everything going on. Amen. Now, St. Peter told him, and said, look, now we walk past this next room. You've got to be quiet. He says, well, St. Pete, why do I have to be quiet? That next room is where the Baptists are, and they think they're the only ones in heaven. <laughs> 25 years ago, God called Rhonda and I to the ministry. And I started preaching at Rinton Heights Baptist Church in Sandersville, Georgia. And I followed a pastor that for 10 years had taught that congregation that they were only going to be Baptist in heaven. Amen. That spiritual blindness. The Pharisees were spiritually blind. There's a theology that has been around since the late 16th, 17th century. That theology teaches there's only going to be a select few in heaven. That theology teaches that some live without hope. I may be a lot of things, but a Calvinist, I'm not. Amen. Amen. 
why am I telling you this? Because my friends, when we come next week to that Lord's table, don't you dare think that you do not have any hope. Don't you dare think that Jesus Christ did not die for you. Amen. He shed his blood that you may live. Amen. By his stripes, the Bible tells us that we are alive. We are healed, my friends. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why do I tell you that? Because a lot of our sister churches now teach that there's only a select few. That would mean that there's individuals under the sound of my voice right now that have no hope. That would mean that there's individuals that are in the sanctuary this morning that, that you don't have no hope. That would mean that you're not allowed to come to sit at the Lord's table. My friend... No, 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 no. You come to that table. Amen. You come to him. Amen. It doesn't matter whether you were a drug addict, whether you were addicted to alcohol. Amen. You may have been addicted to the philosophy, uh, philosophy of this world. But my friends, if you'll call out upon the name of Jesus today, you can't Amen. be saved. Amen. The Bible says, whosoever will call upon him shall be saved. I have tried, I even called Brother Larry earlier in the week. I have tried my best not to, to, to say that. Don't let nobody in the best way I can tell you, don't let anyone bamboozle you, okay? It doesn't matter where you are in life. If you call upon the name of Jesus, you too shall be saved. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Maybe you've been going through things. Y'all come on, Brother James. Maybe you've been going through things in your life where you hear, but you can't see. My prayer is today will be the day that you will begin to see. Father, I just come to you now. You can stand with me, please. Father, I come to you now, and I say, I want to stand in the gap for everybody that's here, Father. Everyone that's under the sound of my voice or in the sanctuary online, Father, I pray that they'll find the strength to come to you. Maybe they've been going through a dark time in their life, Father, whether it's medically, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Father, maybe they begin to see today. May the minds be clear today. Father, maybe there's one that was told that others have no hope, but Father, may that go away today, for we all have hope. Father, I pray right now for the names that will be added to the land's book of life. Father, we love you. Forgive us where we fail thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You need prayer, you come today. God loves you.